Upon its release in 2006, Idiocracy gives us a glimpse into what the United States might look like in 2505. At the time, audiences saw this movie as nothing more than a cutting satire, criticizing the trajectory the country was on. But now, nearly two decades later, with that trajectory becoming steeper and steeper, we can now see that Idiocracy was more than just satire, it was a warning. And as we continuously fail to heed that warning, the 2505 we witness in the movie becomes less and less distant. Idiocracy shows a society controlled and pillaged by corporate operations, human beings who are completely dependent on products that are slowly killing them, and a constant injection of misinformation. These are all the same mechanisms that shape our society in 2023, and they all work together to maintain the status quo just as they do in the fictional society of idiocracy. The film follows US Army librarian Joe Bors, who is scientifically determined by the military to be the most average man in the world, not particularly smart, athletic, or determined, nor the opposite. This quality makes Joe the perfect control candidate for an upcoming classified military hibernation experiment meant to last just for one year. Unable to find a suitable female candidate, the military hires Rita, a prostitute. Upon their selection, Joe and Rita are locked in the hibernation chambers to slumber, and within the next year, the officers in charge of the experiment and Rita's pimp are arrested for running a prostitution ring. Soon after the scandal, the military base containing Joe and Rita was closed and demolished, and with a previous explanation that neither character has close friends or family, the experiment and by proxy Joe and Rita are completely forgotten about, leaving them to hibernate in their pods as the years pass by. Hundreds of years go by, and the chart of average intelligence steadily declines. And as the world's most brilliant scientists are tasked with figuring out how to stop hair loss and extend erections, humans become less and less able to solve basic problems such as proper disposal of garbage. This ultimately leads to the Great Garbage Avalanche of 2505, which causes Joe's pod to end up in the home of Frito, an average brain-dead future citizen. This is where Joe wakes up and slowly realizes where he is and what society has become, an apocalyptic dystopia filled with people who are too dumb to sustain humanity humanity's survival. Towards the beginning of the movie, we get a basic explanation as to how human evolution has led us to this point. Having kids is such an important decision. We're just waiting for the right time. It's not something you want to rush into. The narrator explains that unfavorable economic conditions, social unrest, and the looming threat of global warming have discouraged the smartest of us from reproducing. And meanwhile, the dumbest people aren't considering such factors and are more willing to partake in adultery with multiple partners. meaning they're reproducing at an exponential rate. This dichotomy repeated for years, meaning intelligence is passed on to offspring less and less until it's completely phased out, which ultimately leads us to the society Idiocracy shows in its version of 2505. But what does this say about us? Critics of Idiocracy suggest that by using this logic, the film is advocating for eugenics or some sort of systematic planned breeding of society's smartest individuals. But this is really just a simple visual and comedic way of getting the audience on board with the premise. What the film spends the rest of its runtime trying to tell us is that the problem is environmental. The issue lies within our system, a system that constantly rewards us for dumbing ourselves down and engaging in false desires. Just look at the first thing Joe sees when he wakes up in the future. He sees content, and not just any content. He sees content that appeals to the lowest common denominator, depicting a man getting repeatedly hit in the balls. No story, no lols, just all action and humor that everyone can easily understand. A constant dopamine rush by design. And this is a common theme throughout the movie. We see a network dedicated to masturbation, a sense sensationalist news conglomerates that favors entertainment over truth, televised criminal trials in the form of monster truck rallies, political speeches straight out of WWE. Now I understand everyone's shit's emotional right now, but listen up. It's all built to cater towards our increasingly low intention spans and tickle the most primitive parts of the brain. And it probably sounds very familiar to us, because a short scroll through YouTube, TikTok, or even Netflix's original content will show you we're already embarking on this path, and we have been for quite some time. You'll see programming that wouldn't look out of place in idiocracy. Short scenes, simple concepts, fast-paced editing, devoid of any space for reflection or deeper exploration, subway servers in the background, humor that appeals to everybody while criticizing nobody, designed to reach the widest audience possible, delivering empty platitudes. And this approach is rewarded handsomely. Views go up as even the smartest of us can't help but go back for one more injection of dopamine. Meanwhile, the less instantaneously rewarding content gets lost. Creators and corporations alike begin chasing eyeballs by playing the same methods. YouTube becomes filled with Mr. Beast clones. I hired 50 Spider-Man to find out what it's like to be a crime-fighting superhero. Ever since I was a kid, I've always wanted to feel what it's like to fight supervillains and save the day. TikTok becomes filled with vandalism, public humiliation, and even sex. Sorry? You got a nice dog? She's lovely, she's, she's... 
Being gang, a whole lot of gangs. Our news has even become entertainment. But that's not the worst part. The worst part is that the faces of this movement are rewarded with immense wealth and fame. And at the same time, essential workers are underpaid and disrespected. Teachers struggle to afford their basic needs. Doctors and lawyers are required to take on immense debt with predatory interest rates. So where's the incentive for young people to pursue a career where they meaningfully contribute to society? The truth is, it's gone. From a survey of 3,000 children in 2019, it was determined that over 71% of children in the United States want to be some form of an entertainer when they grow up, either a YouTuber, musician, or a professional athlete. Meanwhile, in China, over 50% of children want to become an astronaut or a teacher or an engineer. And it comes down to incentives. Because if you're a child in the United States, you're constantly being exposed to celebrity, usually in the form of entertainers who seemingly put in minimal effort and reap maximum rewards relative to the rest of us. It's no mystery why children would desire to abandon their pursuit of the steep and arduous ladder of the higher education system, or even physically skilled labor in favor of something exponentially more lucrative. And this is a clear reason for society getting progressively dumber, just like an idiocracy. The major corporations, the leaders of industry and the world, are rewarding the ability to capture attention over everything else. But why are the world's biggest companies pursuing watch time over developing projects that could create a better world? But before we continue, I want to tell you about our video sponsor, War Thunder. Gear up for a relentless battle of supremacy in War Thunder. War of Thunder allows you to engage in heart-pounding, high-octane battles that span across vast interactive maps, featuring an array of ground vehicles, aircraft, helicopters, and ships, being one of the most comprehensive vehicle combat games ever made. And it's not hard to see why. They have over 2,000 meticulously detailed tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships at your command where you can immerse yourself in dynamic, combined arms, player versus player battles. Every vehicle within the game is intricately modeled, down to individual components, guaranteeing that you'll have an intense and immersive combat encounter. And you can get started in the action now on both PC, Xbox Series X and S, and also PlayStation 5, or any other previous console generations. War Thunder also ensures a seamless transition between platforms, so you can always dominate the battlefield on whatever device you choose. And when you do download this game, you'll be able to explore more than 100 years worth of technological advancement, as War Thunder's vehicle collection ranges from the 1920s to the present day, offering a very diverse and authentic experience of warfare evolution. And War Thunder also caters to all playstyles, whether you're seeking a fast-paced action-packed match or a more tactical and realistic encounter. The game provides varying immersion levels to suit your preferences, all with incredible 4K resolution graphics, authentic sound effects, and captivating music that creates an atmosphere to lose yourself in, while each vehicle's movement is accompanied by the realistic rumble of engines and a tactile crunch of tires against different terrains. However, the game does let you choose from a multitude of vehicles to cater to your combat style. So claim victory now and immerse yourself in the riveting world of War Thunder. Join the battle for free on PC, PlayStation or Xbox using my link in the description below. And if you're playing on PC, you can get a massive free bonus pack by clicking the link in the description below. So make sure to check out War Thunder today. But when you see what 2505 looks like in Idiocracy, the answer slaps you across the face in every scene, and it's evident again from the first time Joe steps into his new world. Every television show is framed with a collage of advertisements, clothing is plastered with logos, even the President's State of the Union address has a backdrop marketing soda and credit card companies. The hospitals, prisons, schools, all littered with corporate propaganda. In Idiocracy's version of the future, you have no choice but to give these companies your constant attention and buy their products. In this future, fast food and energy drink companies have effectively normalized themselves to the point when nobody questions why one company provides them with the housing, food, and even medicine. Some even praise these companies for the services they provide. And our current world is just so much closer to this than you think. Advertisements are becoming more intrusive by the day, and most of us just accept it. The news articles, streaming services, public transportation, hospitals, university campuses that were all once relatively ad-free are now constantly familiarizing us with various brands and products. And as a result, major corporations continue to grow and monopolize. We're now at a point where major companies like Coca-Cola, Nestle, Amazon, and Disney own almost everything you consume on a daily basis. It's basically impossible to avoid all of this as they actually own all the perceived competition. And because they have so much influence in our society and culture, the government is forced to cooperate with them. Even when regulations are in place, these now massive companies can use their infinite funds to buy the influence of public officials, influencers, and the regulators themselves. And in turn, they can ravage our national resources, destroy our culture and society, and commodify our primal desires at the expense of our souls. So in this context, it doesn't seem far-fetched that one day we'll wake up to a future 
future, just like this dystopia that Joe finds himself in. Similar to that of Infinite Jest, where every year is advertised by the next major company, the year of the Whopper. But if this trajectory we're on is so obvious, then why haven't we tried to do something about it? Well, the movie then addresses this as well. As these companies grow, they do provide more jobs to the population. According to the most recent census data, nearly 40% of Americans are employed by large companies, with this number skyrocketing over the past decade. It's over 65% if we include mid-sized companies in this figure. And so this means that 40% or 65% of Americans have a vested interest in large companies being able to turn a profit, causing them to overlook the atrocities committed by these corporations and in some cases, vote against their own long-term best interests if it means potentially avoiding layoffs. And we're seeing this exact same scenario illustrated in the movie. Cho, now given public office as the smartest person on earth, actually solves the country's food scarcity problem by replacing existing irrigation systems that water crops with an energy drink produced by their corporate overlords Brondo. But replacing Brondo with water on such a large scale causes the company's stocks to tank, meaning the company lays off 75% of its workforce overnight, which at this point is 75% of their entire population. This results in mass riots at the capital and a call for Joe to be sentenced to death. The masses are willing to kill the only man who can save them from starvation in order to preserve their corporate overlords. And I know what you might be thinking, Idiocracy was released by Fox, who by all accounts is one of the main corporations the movie seeks to take down with its satire. Why would Fox release a film that directly threatens their perception by the public? Well, the truth is, they did everything they could to destroy this movie. Idiocracy was originally meant to be released in August of 2005, but was put on indefinite hold by Fox until its final release date over a year later, and upon its release, it was only shown in seven US cities. Fox was also completely absent in promoting the movie, and while no official comment was given, there was speculation that Fox was unhappy with how the film's message might play to its advertisers and were effectively trying to keep it from being seen by a larger audience. For whatever reason, I just never saw the whole thing. It was just... Well, it kind of... Yeah, it didn't have much of a release, so everything that went wrong went wrong. Everything that could go wrong went wrong. Like The film wasn't even screened for critics, and so many have speculated that the sole reason for the film's survival was that Fox had a pre-existing, extremely lucrative relationship with the movie's creator, Mike Judge. It wasn't until 2018 that someone on the inside, actor Terry Crews, spoke about the film's bizarrely hamstrung release, more or less confirming all of the speculation. Crews actually had this to say, The rumor was, because we used real corporations in our comedy, these companies gave us their name, thinking they were going to get pumped up, and then we're like, welcome to Costco, we love you. And all these real corporations were like, wait a minute, wait a minute. There were a lot of people trying to back out, but it was too late. And so Fox, who owned the movie, decided, we're going to release this in as few theaters as legally possible. So it did get a release, probably, three theaters over one weekend, and it was sucked out into the vortex, making only $400,000 at the box office, making sure none of America saw this movie. So the fact that a film like Idiocracy even saw the light of day is something of a miracle. In a society where corporations who control our culture today, keeping us blind and compliant, somehow a movie that advertises the endgame slipped through the cracks. And if we take a closer look at what this endgame looks like in Idiocracy, there's still one more facet to complete corporate rule we have yet to explore, and it's physically unhealthy by design. You see, as Joe navigates the world, it becomes increasingly clear that the furniture is ergonomically designed to make you lazy, the infrastructure is designed to become unsanitary, and the only available food is designed to destroy your body. The future Idiocracy shows us is full of sedentary zombies, being drip-fed Carl Juniors and sex. But isn't this the antithesis of what these businesses want? Don't they want us to live longer so we can spend more of our hard-earned money on their products? They do, but it's more complicated than you might think. It starts first with encouraging the addictive dopamine feedback loop that I previously outlined, getting people addicted to satisfying their worst impulses by consumption. Sure, this is extremely effective at turning a profit, but it's only really half of the business model. Because the biggest companies aren't just trying to sell you an addiction and all the negative effects that come with it, the biggest companies then want to sell you the cure. It becomes apparent with a closer look at the American Diabetes Association, the American Cancer Society, the American Heart Association, and the Susan G. Komen Foundation. You will see that they're accepting millions of dollars in funding from companies like Kraft, Taco Bell, and KFC, in addition to mass massive pharmaceutical companies like Pfizer and Johnson & Johnson. So when we look at the leading companies that make food, the non-profits meant to educate the population on nutritional intake and disease, and the corporations that develop drugs to treat illnesses, they all have a vested interest in maintaining an unhealthy population. That's why almost everyone around you is so unhealthy these days, why people are dying at record rates of cancer. The lines blur even further when food companies such as Nestle directly purchase ownership in health science and research laboratories, 
and pharmaceutical companies start to invest directly in companies that specialize in the production of food and agriculture. But this doesn't begin and end with food. You can find pharmaceutical companies and religious organizations around the world that have vested interests in nearly every addictive industry across the board. Industries including alcohol, tobacco, gambling, and pornography. They offer pills, treatments, the perfect woman, counseling for all the very addictions they help promote. And it's a very vicious cycle. And I'm not saying these corporations want to deliberately destroy humanity. Instead, they want to nudge us into addiction, push us into a situation where we must do everything we can to survive, giving more and more of our power away to the worst among us, then capitalizing on this desperation, the natural human instinct to survive by selling us the solutions to our struggles. And the truth is, it's working. Although the average human IQ has risen dramatically over the past century, it's been dropping steadily over recent decades. And it's not down to genetics or the idea that dumb people are reproducing at a higher rate than smart people. Researchers are actually finding that the same cognitive differences between generations within the greater population are prevalent within members of the same family. So the evidence supports the theory that this decline in collective IQ is completely tied to the environment our society is creating around us. So what can we do to change this environment, to alter this hopeless trajectory we're on, to avoid full-on idiocracy becoming our reality. Well, Joe actually tells us in a single moment of self-reflection from the movie. Joe realizes at this moment that it wasn't just the dumbest of us contributing to society's downfall. It was everyone else who sat back and did nothing while we were spiraling towards the gutter. It was those of us who actively avoided the opportunity to lead in the face of crisis and decided to follow instead. People wrote books and movies, movies that had stories. So you cared whose ass it was and why it was farting, and I believe that time can come again. Or worse, those of us who recognized the incoming disaster and simply chose to get out of the way. So find some time to do something today. Step away from the hamster wheel of dopamine or consumption that even the best and smartest of all of us fall victim to daily. Even if we can take just 30 minutes out of our day to enjoy a walk with no distractions, look at the trees, breathe in the fresh air, and learn more about the world, maybe then we can avoid the dystopian future idiocracy predicts. And I want to end this video by saying a big thanks to War Thunder for sponsoring this video. Remember to check out the game with my link below to receive some awesome bonuses such as boosters and premium vehicles.